Hello my dudes and welcome back to Minecraft Mine Colonies Byzantine. Now as you can see, we've been sprucing up the pad and I've put some pictures on the wall of my dog. I've also moved around some of the machines and mechanisms we have down here to make things a bit neater and tidier. But that's not all I've been doing, take a look. So firstly I wanted to get the sawmill up from level 1 to level 2. We're really capped at the moment with how many recipes the sawmill can contain. Only 10 is just nowhere near enough. And I made a mistake last episode, every level doesn't give you 10 more recipes, every level doubles the previous amount. So it goes from 10 to 20, then 20 to 40, and 40 to 80 and so on. But not only that, we've also expanded the area out and added these retaining walls now behind the town hall and all the way along through our industrial sector. And also we've dragged that road around so it looks a bit more like a proper city. So there you go, I'm going to turn off my TV and let's get in game and walk through what we're going to be doing this episode. Yeah, so as you can see, I've kind of neatened things up here. We've got everything going on, but I've moved back the architect's cutter and the stone cutter, removed some of the furnaces and crafting benches and things that we had here, because we don't really need them. We've got superior options now with the computer. Amazing. Now also I dragged my iron furnace from the boat over here to the pad because it is a slight upgrade from the jumbo furnace. It's not quite as quick, but we don't need any fuel if we hook it up with power. But to do that, we need to add an augment. And take a look, the augment factory converts the furnace into a factory. That means it's not going to use coal or wood or anything. We can actually feed it with power. And the recipe for that couldn't be simpler. Paper, redstone, a piston, and some granite or stone. So I believe I actually have all of those things already. And boom, yeah, there I go into the furnace, go to Augment, pop it in. I guess it goes in the right. There we go. There we go. Okay, we just had to replace the pipe. And so now the iron furnace will use power. So yeah, the pad is looking pretty good. We do still need the architect's cutter because there's some recipes that we can't make over at the sawmill, usually the ones that need stone. But over here we have the dog wall. Yeah, I got three pictures of my dog. Makes me feel much more at home down here in my pad. Oh, there she is. What a good girl. And also the kitchen. Now I stumbled across something pretty cool over here. I realized instead of mixing water with this wheat flour manually with buckets, we can actually make dough from Create in our Cooking for Blockheads kitchen. <laughs> And it's super, super easy. Man, that's going to make upgrading the computer so much better. But what's on the list of things to do today? Well, yeah, let's take a look at the health of the colony. Everything's going pretty good so far. And if I look at my clipboard, we can see, oh man, there are a lot of requests in here. And you know what? 99.9% .9 of it is just gear for the guards. So that kind of settles it. Our build this episode is going to be a blacksmith. We need a way for us to craft these important pieces of armor and weaponry that our soldiers need. What up Tuppy, what up Rogue? So research wise, we've completed a few things. I basically wrapped up as much as I could down technology. It's all super simple and super quick at level one, but we got woodwork done last episode. And between then I've done hot for the smeltery and hitting iron for the blacksmith's hut, because I think if we have two builders, why not get both of these things built at the same time? They're both pretty essential buildings. But we also have researchers to spare, so I reckon we're going to be investigating stone cake, which requires chiseled stone bricks. And we're also going to be unlocking string work, which gives us the Fletcher's hut, because we need a place to put our commercial district, which is where the Fletcher's hut is going to be, but also we need a way to get fishing rods on the regular to our fisherman, who is basically our primary source of food right now. There's loads of other things we can do down the line, like a stone smeltery, glass blower's hut, a mechanic's hut, which we'll need before we go to level three with the town hall. But for now, let's focus on these simple things. So string for the Fletcher and chiseled stone bricks for the stonemason. There we go. This should make us a stack of stone bricks. What? What rains on your head? I'll go fix your roof then. What am I, your mum? Anyway, we're going to go to the stone cutter now, put the stone bricks in here, 
and this is going to help us get chiseled stone bricks. Yeah, much better than using an actual chisel, the stone cutter block of legends. And the other thing we needed, what was it? String? Yeah, I think so. Got some of this. Boom. Let's get back to the uni. Now, as you can see here, we don't have a tavern name yet and keep those suggestions coming in. Now, if you watch this far into the video, I want you to give me names for a university as well, because university, it's just a bit bland. This university needs a name. Maybe something in keeping with a Byzantinian style colony. So here we go. We're looking for, where was it? Stone cake. Boom. Research that mother trucker. And the other research is gonna be the Fletcher's Hut string work. There we go. So we've got two researchers locked in. We'll leave those to cook in the background. Now, next up, it's time to go into the computer and make these buildings that we want to make. So let's think about this. We want the blacksmith. Oh, caps, but that's fine. Shouldn't be too hard to make. Got all the bits. Good. And what was the other one? The smeltery. There it is. And again, got all the bits. Amazing. Now, I'm very excited to see what these buildings look like, but I'm really hoping that they're smaller. Whoops, wrong key. Really hoping that they're smaller than the sawmill, which was an absolute behemoth of a building. It looks amazing though at level two. And in fact, let's take a look inside this building now. Now I didn't realize this before, but I think these blocks of copper frame thin walls are supposed to be like a band saw. And this log is supposed to come down here and get chopped up in half into planks. Good job, Jay. But also this building adds a little courier's hut, a little courier's cart. Now I don't think we can hire anybody because again, we're running low on dudes. We might have to let colonists have babies again, but that's a problem for down the line. At the moment, we can just, you know, hire some dudes from the tavern. Now, we've got a nice little bit of space here as well, and the seawall has been expanded. But the question is, is this going to be enough space? I don't really know. What do these buildings look like? This is the blacksmith. Now, I reckon the blacksmith is right at home, right next to the smeltery. But let's spin this sucker around and get a bit of a bird's eye view so we can see what's going on. Okay, a very good looking building. I love these open plan blacksmiths. I think they look perfect. And over here down by the river is a perfect spot. But what is this thing gonna look like at level two? Whoa, three, four, and five. Amazing, so not too many improvements. They're really just block changes up the levels from like wood to brick, but a pretty cool looking building. And there we go, I reckon this is going to be the perfect spot for our blacksmith. Oh yeah, loads of room, and it's going to look great. Tick the box. Now, before we get going on this, let's see if we can put the smeltery right next to it. Yeah, that looks pretty okay. What about through the levels? So one, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, this is going to look really good next to the blacksmith because they have a very similar build style. Perfectly lined up, and we can pull the trigger on this. Now, I'm not quite sure what the materials are required for these, so let's take a look. Shouldn't be anything too crazy, and even if it is, now we have our computer. Getting things efficiently created for our builds is super easy. Granite, some dirt, cobblestone, oak. Ooh, five magma blocks. We don't have any of those. I'm going to have to track them down. Ah, again, magma blocks. This time, eight. So magma blocks aren't crazy to find, especially since we have access to the nether. Yeah, let's go and track down these magma blocks. Whoa, what's this? What's going on in here? Sounds like someone's getting real busy. Oh, that reminds me, yeah. So we set our miner up with all the materials he needed and gave him all the scaffolding. But what does his block say? What are you looking for, bro? Signs. Oh, that's the one thing we didn't teach our carpenter how to make. So let's go and quickly give him the sign recipe because that's the only thing holding us back now from mineral wealth. There we go. Okay, so we'll leave him to cook and let's go into the nether now and see if we can track down these magma bricks. Just take a shortcut down here. Oh, hello, Craven. Any reason why you're not using the cool railway we have set up? How's it going? Now, our guards are actually, yeah, running around the colony trying to defend it, but they are totally naked right now. So if we do get a raid, they're going to have trouble staying alive. Here we go, the nether, ah, oh, Brutal and unforgiving, but actually kind of chill too. And already I can see one magma block at least. 
so the nether isn't like super deadly, super dangerous. And you can actually find magma blocks in the overworld, in certain biomes, but it's just so much easier to come over here into the nether because it's kind of everywhere over here. So that looks like some magma down there. Let's just go and grab that. Now we might need some more of this for future builds. And we also might need some quartz. So while we're here, grab a bit of that. And there we go, two stacks and 18. I reckon that's gonna be plenty. Let's get home. Man, I've gotta say, we did super luck out on finding the netherite monstrosity so quickly. I've heard from you guys in the comment section that some of you have searched around the nether for days, thousands and thousands of blocks without finding one of these structures. Guess I got super lucky. And over there, there's kind of like a nether fortress as well. It's like everything we need right on our doorstep. Very good. So back in business, I'm gonna get to the stone. Oh my god, no! Oh, oh! Oh, that's tricky. So I didn't realize this, but yeah. Zombie pigmen can follow you through the nether gate, and when they do, the colonists just don't like them. Wait, what's Random Nerd doing? Anyway, I'm going to make the bits and bobs we're going to need to get this built, and then I'll see you for the time lapse build of both the smeltery and the blacksmith. Oh yeah, the smeltery and the blacksmith. Two very important buildings for the automation of our colony. The blacksmith is the dude who's going to keep our guys fully stocked in armor, weapons, but also he's really good at creating things like iron chains, iron bars. Basically, if it uses metal, this is the guy to craft it. And likewise, right next to him, the smelter is also super important and actually a really good way of duplicating ores. Now that most of the ways to duplicate ores in all the mods have been nerfed, actually the smeltery from mine colonies remains a really strong choice. Boom, there's the blacksmith, great job. Once you get the smeltery up to like level five or so and with some upgrades from the university, the building can turn one piece of ore into three ingots which is really good in all the mods 9. Other mods in other mod packs make that look pathetic, but for an automated smelter system, it's actually really cool. Now these builds went up much quicker than I was expecting. They're kind of relatively small, and that's a big relief to me because the sawmill was colossally huge. It was massive. So it's about time we got some much smaller industrial buildings over here in the colony. But again, these guys are mostly wood, and wood is a pretty ugly thing to be building with. It's a necessary evil for level 1, so getting these up to level 2 is definitely high on my priority list. Likewise, we're going to need to expand the industrial area out by quite a bit, because there's loads of buildings we're going to want to put here. But so far, so good. Things are looking real, real, real promising. Now again, we don't actually have any dudes that we can put into these roles over here at the blacksmith or the smeltery, so we are going to have to go over to the tavern and recruit a couple of dudes, but that's always an exciting prospect. Now as always, if you want to be one of the dudes we do recruit into the colony, you can become a Patreon member or a YouTube member, find the post on the community pages of either Patreon or YouTube, and then drop a name submission. We'll add it to the list, and there's a chance that that name will be selected every time Mine Colonies generates a new dude. And it's been really cool as well to see in the comment section you guys react when your name gets picked. But there we go, that's both the smeltery and the blacksmith complete. There's a lot to configure with at least one of these buildings. Let's get in game and set these guys up. Okay, but before we go over there and hire a couple of dudes, we have to first recruit some travelers into our colony. So we're off to Tavern X. Oh yeah, actually, you know what? Tavern X isn't that bad a name. Kind of sounds like where the X-Men might come to have a drink or two. Any, wait a minute. There's, there's no guys here. Where are all the dudes? Oh, they're kind of wandering around the colony. Okay, yes. Yeah. So if you leave your dudes for too long, they get a bit bored and they wander away from the tavern. I guess they kind of get drunk and stumble onto the streets of Constantinople. But here's a dude right here. Wait, where'd you go? Oh my god, she disappeared in front of our very eyes. Well, okay. What about these nuts? Who are you? Hiding behind here, Deez Nuts Maximus. I love that name. Now, four cakes is manageable, but I'd rather not have to worry about all that sugar, cake, and milk. So we've got Witchy Wolf Dawn Sales, but those are two names we kind of already have in the colony, so I don't know if I want to hire you. 
So who else is knocking around? Um, these guys are usually quite easy to see because those square icons above their head show up for miles around. Yeah, do you know what? I reckon Deez Nuts Maximus is going to be the one. Now we're going to get some cakes for him, but before we do, Fine morning, isn't it? let's give him some lamb chops because that'll make sure he sticks around for longer and he won't vanish while we're making these cakes. And hop over to the kitchen now because this full jar of milk is all the milk we're ever going to need. Put the eggs in the fridge and the sugar cane. Then we can make sugar at the crafting table. There we go. And here we go. Oh man, we can already make a whole bunch of really cool stuff like donuts. Oh man. Oh no, there it is. Cake. Boom. So four of these. Can we afford that? No. So it's one egg per cake. Ugh, egg hunt. Well, we've kind of got time to burn. And if I look at the map, I am sure we can track down some chickens. In fact, yeah, there's a load over here near the pigs. Yeah, we should be fine. Dum dum dum, looking for chickens. Hello. Hello, Mr. Pig. Have you seen any chickens around here? They go buck, 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 and they lay these weird shaped balls that kind of look like someone sat on them. Oh, wait, maybe. Is that why eggs are the shape they are? Because they used to be balls, but someone sat on them? Like, because when you lay them, you sit on them? So here's a chicken, but killing a chicken isn't going to get us an egg. We kind of have to find them lying around near the chicken, so there's one. We need one more. Oh, and actually, is that a waystone? Yeah, I'll grab that. Those things always come in handy. So where's these other chickens? Aha, uh -huh, there you are. You got a you got an egg for me, little little bro? Oh, yeah, you do. Two eggs. Okay, time to head back to base. So here we go. Two more eggs spells out two more cakes for us. One, two, three, four. Boom. The perfect amount of cakes. Let's go and get these nuts into the colony. Man, I'll never get bored of saying that name. So Tavernex, who's roughly around here somewhere, right? Skulking around the plaza. Where is he? I mean, yeah, where is he? Is it you? Yeah, there he is. What up, Chief? I've got some cakes for you, my friend. Boom, yeah, and his stats aren't amazing, but he'll do for either a blacksmith or a smelter. Next up, we're gonna need another dude. So, ooh, who else is floating around? Ah, we've got Alex Renard, nice. Hi. Oh, perfect, and nether quartz, very easy, very simple. Do I have any left over in my dank? No, so I'm gonna give you some pork chops. And go and grab that quartz. Okay, Alex, I've got your quartz. It's a weird request, but you know what? I'm fine with that. You know what? Alex Great is a pretty... Whoa. Alex is a pretty cool name. Everybody I've known called Alex has been a pretty cool dude. In fact, my first ever best friend was called Alex. So what do you know? Anyway, can we get you into the colony? Did we get you in? Yeah, you're in the colony. Amazing. So now we have those two dudes, and it looks like it's getting to night time. We can have a sleep, and then go and hire them over at these buildings. Oh man, you know, I've got to say, I do love the colony at night. It looks super amazing. It does seem that every night I'm going to have to defend myself against phantoms. But, you know what, there are worse problems to have. Oh man, yeah, look at the moon through those trees. Amazing. Man, we're lucky actually there's no werewolves in this, uh, in this mod pack, because yeah, that bright full moon just asking to bring about lichens. Well, okay, let's head on over here now and take a look inside these buildings. Now, one of the quirks of the blacksmith is it looks like it doesn't replace the block on the floor. And I reckon if we tried to put this down on just like concrete or cobblestone, it wouldn't remove it and it wouldn't put grass here. So we can probably come back safely and give this thing a proper floor because at the moment, I don't know, it just feels a bit weird having grass inside the blacksmith, but check it out. This is a really cool looking building. Oh man, you know what? This forge kind of reminds me of the forge from Conan the Barbarian. Oh man, badass forge for a badass dude. So who are we gonna recruit? We've got two options, Alex or Deez Nuts. And it looks like Alex is slightly better for the blacksmith, but Alex has way better stats in general. So before we hire a blacksmith, Let's go over and see what a smelter requires for their stats. And also, actually, I believe a smelter might be more important to have the better dude. Ah, uh, yeah, no, actually, Maximus is slightly better for this as well. And they're going to level up their stats anyway while they work here. So we'll get these nuts over here. Nice, cool looking uh, smelter there. 
very slick. And let's see what the blacksmith looks like. Now, I do miss the days of the blacksmith being a dwarf. Don't know why they made him not a dwarf. I'm a bit sad about that, but here we go. Alex? Do you know how hard it is to take water out of a mattress? I... Why... Why Why are you getting water in a mattress? So, is this your blacksmithing gear? So, what will it be for you? Doesn't look very blacksmithy. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm fine with that. So, this is pretty cool. Now, we have the smeltery and a guy inside here. Wait, what? He's got like a... He's got a problem? What's your problem? Good day to see ya. Please tell me what kind of fuel I should use in my furnace. Okay. Well, we're kind of going with jungle planks as a fuel. So we can sort that out now. Oh my god, this is going to take a while to load because it loads everything in the game that can be a fuel. But here we go, jungle planks. There we go, that looks like the one. Oh, and you can even tell him which ores to smelt and which ones not to. But we'll leave them all on because there's no real reason why he shouldn't be smelting ores. Oh look! So, oh my god, the whole, the whole gang's here! It's like the Backstreet Boys of Courier Squads. Boom. Synchronized dancing, like a K-pop dance group. Anyway, what did they drop off? Ah, they were delivering jungle planks as fuel. Amazing! Now the blacksmith, on the other hand, does not need any fuel, but what they do need is materials and recipes. Now what we were doing this for was basically to get guards armor. So the most important thing I reckon is to teach Alex how to make a full set of iron armor. So here we go. Iron boots. Boom. Iron helmets. Boom. Iron chest. And iron pants. Now we could also teach Alex how to make chainmail and leather, but we want to save our leather and I feel like I want to go straight to iron and forget chainmail. But some of our guard towers are only level one, like the ones inside the insulae, for example. I didn't bother upgrading them. And in fact, I don't think you can until you upgrade the insulae in general. So that thing's going to need to be level three before the guys in there can use iron, I think. But another very important thing that we can teach Alex is sword recipes. Yeah. So we want to teach them stone swords for sure, but we don't want to use weird sticks. We want to use legit sticks. So here we go, a stone sword, and we want to remove this dusk stick and put the legit stick in there, but also we don't want to use ancient stone. Oh man, how do I get real stone? Cobblestone will work, so we'll put cobblestone there. A stick in the bottom, and boom, make me a stone sword, please. Now likewise, we also want to teach the recipe for iron sword, because there could be some dudes that can use iron swords. And that's a reasonable upgrade. Now, not only can he make weapons and armor, he can also make pretty cool tools, or she rather. So of course, we're using the last four recipes to make the most important tools on the colony. But we're gonna make them at stone level for two reasons. Number one, we wanna save our iron because it's more valuable in other things and anybody can use a stone tool. It seems like a better way of doing things. And yeah, it's just better using stone tools early on until you get loads and loads and loads of iron. Otherwise, our guys are gonna just make loads and loads of iron tools and we're gonna run out of iron for more important things. Now, again, I don't know why the builder fills up these empty holes that are supposed to be doors with sand. It's, it's really weird. Why did they seal off the guard tower? So, Spamanti, if you're watching, let me know why you've put sand blocking the entrances to these guard towers. It's a weird one. So the blacksmith is fully configured with all the recipes we can fit in there for the moment, the most important ones at least. And likewise, the sawmill has everything to hook the mine up with, and the smelter has all the fuel they need. They're just looking for smeltable ores like iron and gold and whatnot. So let's have a sleep on the corner here, like the bums we are. Oh, looks like we finished string work, so we can actually make a Fletcher's hut now as well. But yeah, there we go. Okay, well, the, the colony is fully locked and loaded. And I'm trying to think now, what is there next to do? Well, there's a whole bunch of buildings for us to work through, but maybe there's something a little bit more important. Maybe it's time to start thinking about getting one of these other buildings up to level three. Now we're gonna need a lot more capacity and couriers in the warehouse. So it could be a good idea to get the warehouse to level three. So let's see what it takes to build this bad boy up to level three. And actually, yeah, pretty cool. Framed, framed, framed cream bricks, not too bad. Brick stairs, polished granite slabs, 
iron bars. Again, this is basically the reason why we're not using iron to make um, swords and tools, because we need these bars, and they're not cheap. Some polished diorite, a bed, a bed, beige bricks, and some shingles, but this is all very manageable. So I reckon what we're going to do is see if we can get this warehouse to level three, because that's going to be really important for us. So, Jay, you're up. Boom. Upgrade this bad boy, and let's go and get him what he needs. So I don't really know why specifically, but the builders have really picked up speed. For some reason, getting this warehouse to level 2 took a builder ages, and maybe it's just a simpler upgrade getting it from 2 to 3, but he put this up in almost no time at all. Really impressive. It could be that he's a higher level, it could be that his builder's hut is level 4 now, or it could just be, yeah, a quirk of the build. But yeah, this thing went up really quickly. Getting the warehouse to level 3 is going to give us loads more rack space, and it's one step closer to being able to see exactly what is inside the warehouse via the block. I think it gives us more couriers too, so let's jump in and take a look inside the building. Okay, so looking really, really, really good. Man, yeah, look at these bricks. This place is positively heaving also with couriers. Man, I love how these couriers just come over here and hang out at the warehouse, like everything's going down here. I wonder if when the sun sets, this place turns into a weird German techno club. With names like Decoy Bonehead hanging around, I would not be surprised. In fact, I bet this guy's a DJ. Don't worry, Decoy, your secret is safe with me. Now, let's take a look. How much extra rack space has this place added? Oh my god, yeah. Racks for absolutely days. But where did the bed go? One of the materials required for this was a bed. But where is that? Is it up in the tower? Yeah, what What the hell? Why is there a bed up here in the tower? That's so bizarre, but you know what? I'll go with it. Oh man, and look at the view from here. The colony is looking amazing. And I think this has become my new favorite spot in the colony. I'm gonna have to come up and do my intros from here all the time. What an amazing look. But things are going amazingly. Things are going swimmingly over here on the colony. This episode, we've got the blacksmith and the smeltery hut put down, and our warehouse has been upgraded to level three. Not to forget also at the beginning of the episode, we also upgraded the sawmill to level two and added these pretty cool retaining walls behind the town hall. Also, I found my new favorite place in the colony. It's up on this watchtower on top of the warehouse because you get a beautiful bird's eye view of absolutely everything that's going on in this colony. Wow. Now, we've also added some machines to our house and everything's going pretty well there. So honestly, yeah, the colony is really picking up speed now. I think maybe I'll have to turn on Kids Will Be Born soon because we're starting to need a lot more dudes in a lot more jobs and perish the thought I might actually need some more housing. Next episode, though, I want to leave behind the industrial sector and head back on over to the agricultural zone because there's a few things I want to build over there. The plantation is going to be incredibly important, but also, most importantly, I think, is getting a cow ranch so we can have a reliable source of leather on the go. I've been Stjin. Thank you for watching. As always, make sure you hit that thumbs up to give this video a like. Also, if you want to, you can subscribe. And until next time, take care.